grab those pencils and let's get started. But what I want to do now is I want to come down onto this face and I'm just going to start on his nose and again I'm just going to take this, these lines, it doesn't really matter too much about this nose because he's got quite a dark bit on the end, on the outside of his nose, but I'm just going to take that down a little bit. I'm going to just dab these wrinkles a little bit as well. I want to take a, a dark sepia, quite a sharp dark sepia and this little triangle here is what's going to create the eye. There's not much in this eye at all, but what's there we need to sort of look after. So I'm just going to make sure that I don't lose that line. I want to keep that line. I want to keep those lines there. They're quite important because that's what we're going to create the, um, the eye out of. Before we continue, I've just got time to mention that if you're looking for more tutorials this festive season, you might like to join me over on Patreon. You'll find over 140 hours of pet portrait and animal theme tutorials that you can work through and I add more every month. Okay, let's get back to Santa. I want to go into this face. and I'm using a little bit of the Burnt Ochre 10%. Come around that nose there. And I'm just getting a light under layer, so I'm gonna use little circular, little circular strokes. Really light. And at this stage, it's almost sort of coloring in. That's all I'm doing, I'm just bringing the color as a base layer into this face. What I don't want is I don't want to see the pencil lines. I want the the application of the colour to be nice and even, nice and soft. I'm just going to come up to about here, to these lines here. We are going to put some pink into here because you can see his skin coming through his hair. But I'm just going to go up to there just for the minute. We'll deal with that other side afterwards. So I'm just going to bring this colour really lightly. I'm just getting a base, a base colour down. What I want to do now is to take a, a rose carmine pencil. This is from the Polychromos. And I'm going to start to bring a little bit of this rose carmine around here. It's a really, really bright colour. I don't want to press on hard. I'm putting hardly any pressure down on, on this pencil. Nothing at all. In fact, you'd think sometimes it was hardly even touching the paper. That's how little pressure I've got down there. What I do want to do is I want to just, I'm taking a cap at Lawton Violet and I just want to come around this nose. I don't want to lose this nose. And also we've got almost like a crease going up the side of his nose. So I don't want to lose that. I want to plot that in. There's also quite a heavy crease there. I'm going to keep that and bring this over here as well. That sort of comes over there, doesn't it? We've got these creases. So I'm using Capit Morton Violet to plot it in because it's going to end up being quite a neutral colour for um, for this face. Come around there, that's a, a crease that comes around there, that comes around here. So I'm almost using like little dashes really, just little dashes to plot this in really lightly, plot it in, bring those down there, make sure I don't lose those. And then the other thing that I want to do, I want to take the dark sepia and I want to plot in this nostril because we definitely don't want to lose that. What I do want to do is just take the, the Burnt Ochre 10% under there, right under his nose, to the top of this moustache. 
and then we can shape the the bottom of his nose. This is uh, this is warm grey four. He's obviously going to have a dark bit coming off the bottom of his nose, but we'll shape that afterwards. Okay, so back to this uh, rose carmine, and what I want to do is to take a really light application. I'm using little circles because I can't see any sort of definition on the skin. It's just nice and subtle. I'm going to bring a little bit of the rose carmine around here as well. And you might think this is really bright and it is quite bright. He's obviously got quite uh, a bright skin tone. It's quite a pink skin tone, but we will be toning this down. This isn't the colour of his skin. I use this rose carmine quite a lot, especially when I'm doing like, uh, you know, a dog's tongue or, you know, need some some pink for that. It, it looks really, really bright, but it works really nicely at creating a bright sort of skin tone. And just coming around the edge of this nose and also here, and you can see how a little colour is going down on the paper. If I was to come in too heavy handed with this at this stage, i.e. if I was to press the, the tooth of the paper down, it would really stop me from adding extra colours on top because what I'm doing at the minute is I've just put the, the, the pigment almost on top of the tooth. I've not pressed it in, so it's almost on top of the tooth. And that means I can just then uh, mix other colours in with it as it as I'm, I'm going to put other colours down in a minute. Because I haven't pressed it down into that tooth. I've just put it on top of the tooth of the paper by pressing on really lightly. And that means that I can easily sort of blend other uh, colours down on the page. If this was watercolour, obviously, we'd be mixing the colours in the palette. But because this is colour pencil, we can't mix colours on a palette. We have to mix colours directly down on the paper. And so using these really light applications means that we can uh, sort of push the colour together a little bit on the paper. Once you've sort of pushed it into the tooth of the paper, you've, you've fixed it. You've, um, you've sort of fixed it a bit in place and, and that's it then. You can't really uh, do much with it not so easy to blend, not so easy to move around, you're just sort of stuck with this sometimes quite heavy application of colour because you've pushed it down. So we've got some of the rose carmine down on the uh, paper and what I want to do now is I want to blend it with again light pressure and using a little bit of the brown ochre 10%. I'm just going to switch to a bigger pencil so that I can keep my hand out of the way of the out of the way of the camera a little bit more. We're going to have some colour behind these glasses, but I'm not worried about that too much. I just want to blend this, and again, I want to blend this with really light pressure, and we'll see it start to come together. When I get to this bit over here, I am going to come down his cheek in the direction that his cheek's going. And I can use circular strokes around here and up here. But then I'm gonna to come to little directional strokes as I come over this cheek because this is where his, um, most of his wrinkles are gonna be. And I'm gonna to want to define some of those wrinkles. I'm just going to blend the edge of this face up to this hat, just sort of take it up and into that fur a little bit. It's going to go quite dark up there, so we've still got quite a bit of dark to go in there, but I'm just going to take it up that way anyway. So you can see we're starting to create a colour that is a little bit more like his uh, face colour on the reference photograph now. From there, what I want to do is I want to come around the back to start with, around the back of this face, around the side of this face with the Venetian red. I'm using little circular strokes again, bringing it around the back of this, this face, just sort of preserving those glasses for the minute. I'm gonna put those in in a second. Coming around here. 
when I get to this part again, again, I'm just going to start to pull the pigment over in the direction that these wrinkles are coming in. Bring it down here. I'm going to, I know it looks like I've got quite a divider line here at the minute. We are going to have some of this colour come into this beard, but I'm going to do that after. So I'm just going to concentrate on the face and his wrinkles for the minute. And then I'll move on to that blending into the beard. So I'm going to come around the front. I'm just looking for the areas that are slightly more sort of muted, not as bright. And I'm using this Phoenician red. Again, it's another useful colour I find quite useful um, in animal portraits as well as for this Santa's face. Bring that down. He's got a little bit of shine there. We'll take this up here. Around the side of his nose. I've got some colour to put behind the glasses there. Just use a little bit of this Phoenician red around this eye as well. Another colour that I'm going to put into this face is light magenta. And I'm going to bring a little bit up the side of this face here. A little bit around the front here with these cheeks. And don't worry if this, if you think this is all looking a bit bright on your uh, portrait at the minute, because this is going to get toned down a lot. This is, um, we're just sort of putting under layers to start to build up the colours of the skin. But it'll be, it'll be toned down quite a bit. I'm just going to put a little bit under his eye here as well. At this point now, I want to start to have a look at putting some colour in his eye. So I'm going in with a cold grey too initially. I'm going to fill the whole of this space, this little triangle in. Obviously, I'm going to preserve his glasses. I'm going in with a cold grey too. There's not much that we can get into this eye. But what we can put in there is um, something that makes it him look like he's got an eye that's looking out. And to do that, we've got the, it is the white of his eye, but obviously it's still quite dark. So that's gonna be this bit at the back. And then the bit at the front, we are going to make quite dark. So it's going to look like it's his pupil and his iris that's looking out. So I've got that dark, or oh, I've got the, the cold gray two in there. What I want to do is I want to take the dark indigo and remembering we've just got to preserve these bits of, glasses uh, the side of this the, these glasses here and I'm going to just add some color to this bit underneath I'm going to take the cap at Morton violet and come into the back of this eye with the Caput Morton Violet. Soften that out a little bit off the edge. It's quite soft. Even though you can see it's the edge of the eye, it's also quite a soft diffused line. So I'm just going to bring the Caput Morton Violet and I'm, I'm really pressing on quite gently. I'm really not putting in a lot of pressure. Otherwise, it's not going to look as natural as I want. I want this to be really nice and soft. I'm coming around here with a little bit of a curve. So we've got this little line here that uh, represents a little wrinkle um, on the line drawing. And this, it comes around in almost like a little teardrop shape. So that's going to give you a guide as to what sort of curve you need to have on this bit that's coming off this eye. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag the, the edge of the eye out. First of all, with the cap at Morton Violet. I'm going to drag the top out as well. Tiny little lines, really tiny. Just to break up that edge, just a little bit. 
and then I'm going to come in with the dark sepia. I'm going to go into this area with the dark sepia and also over the top. And I'm just going to bring this off the corner of this eye. I'm going to darken down the back of this eye as well. I'm going to come in with the Cold Grey 3. Darken that down. Blend that indigo that we've put in into the back of that eye a little bit. And just pop that pop that definition on that eye. And just darken down this little bit. Whilst I'm here now, I'm going to work on these glasses as well. So what I want to do, I'm going to get the brown ochre 10% and just go over those glasses with that. And then I'm going to take the dark sepia and follow that line. Tidy that up here. That extra little bit there. And then we've got this, this light of it here, which I'm just going to put back in with the orangish yellow from the Pablo and just pop that in there. What I want to do from there is come over the top of this crease with, this is a warm grey six. So I want to come around this quite a dark uh, sort of deep crease there. I want to come around there and then we've got this bit that goes into the top of his goes into his hat up here. I'm going to use a little bit of the Venetian red in here and just tone that down a little bit. Just coming around these creases I want the warm grey four to come over the top of this eyelid. I'm just going to soften the edge of the eye with it, but also bring it down. This is going to go quite dark up here, but I want to bring this down. This is almost like his eye socket. This is his eyelid. And I want to tone that down. I'm also going to bring this colour, so we've got a bit off the top of his nose there, which is quite sort of dark, so I'm just going to pop that in. Got this dark bit coming down here, off the side of his eye. I'm going to use the dark sepia in this bit above his glasses. This is quite dark up here. So I'm just very gently sort of feathering it off the side of his eye. And I'm just going into the back of this eye with a cold grey five to darken that area down a little bit more. I want to start to tone down this pink now. So what I'm going to do is I'm using a, a warm grey four and I'm going to bring this, this grey off the top of this head. up to this forehead. I'm going to come into this side of this eyelid with a bit of the Caput Morton Violet as well. 
And just take a bit of the Caput Morton Violet into this area. Darken down that. That crease in the eyelid. Just darken that down a bit. And then back with the uh, the warm grey four to tone down this pink again that's up here. So I'm going to take this over the top of these glasses and bring this cold grey, uh, sorry, this warm grey four all the way over the back of the glasses uh, up here on the back of this side of the face. Just little circular motions. I'm also, whilst I've got this grey in my hand, I'm also going to come around the front of this nose and I'm going to put a darker edge on the front of this nose. And shape off the bottom of this nostril. So still with the warm grey four, Just using it to shape and create a bit of form on the edge of this nose. A little bit that's sort of going around there in a curve. Coming off the edge of this nostril. And then we've obviously got the bit that's coming off the nose there. So we've got the darker bit in the nostril, but then he's got a lighter, almost like a shadow under his nose. So I'm just going to pop that in and bring the grey, we've got this wrinkle that's coming out here, but I'm gonna bring the grey down this side of the wrinkle, coming around the little clips on his, his nose. And he's definitely got quite a bit of sort of grey shadow in that area. I'm gonna come down the front of these glasses with, this is a, a cold grey three. So I'm going to come down the front of the glasses with that. I'm going to take the uh, the dark sepia and bring that down the front, down this line as well. Just curve that around slightly. His hat's going to come over here a little bit more. So I will bring his hat over a bit more. And on the back of these uh, glasses, I'm going to use a colour which is uh, Burnt Sienna 10%. So I'm going to come into the back with Burnt Sienna 10% and then add the little line to represent the edge of the, the glass that you can see on the other side. And take that up there as well. And like I say, the hat's going to come down there a little bit bring that down. I want to come into this bit with this little clip that he's got on the side of his nose so I'm using the dark sepia just drawing that little clip in it's almost like a little square little rectangle and it's got that little circle in the middle I want to go back with the warm grey for and just shape the little clip he's got on the edge of his nose just bring a little bit of that burnt sienna into that. I'm going to come into this bit then with the brown ochre 10% for the minute. We'll, re, we'll redo that, but that'll be fine for the minute. I just want to come around the edge of these glasses with a little bit of white. I'm going to put a little bit of white along there. And a little bit, so this is the white Pablo. to create that, that feeling of glass. Down the side of these glasses, I'm just going to go down there with a little bit of the Caput Morton Violet and then just a tiny little line just to diffuse the edge of those glasses. That's all I want to do. Just diffuse that and we'll blend that. We'll blend that as we go. The 
one thing that I want to do next now is to start to bring in some of the shadow um, or bring in some more shadows into this face. And I'm coming in with the sepia 50%, which is a, a luminance pencil. And I'm going to come down the front of this nose, really light pressure. Drag a little bit of shadow off the bottom of that nostril. And it might seem like we're taking quite a lot of time on this face. And we are taking a lot of time on the face because the uh, the wrinkles and the skin, you know, it does take a little bit of time. However, when we then get down onto the, uh, the coat and the other parts, it actually picks up speed. We don't spend this sort of amount of time on all of the, the portrait. But I think it is worth trying to make these wrinkles and putting this you know trying to trying to fit in the detail into the face so we can capture his his lovely jolly face and all of his all of his wrinkles and all of his his color so i've got a little bit of color just coming around here the other thing that i want to do then is to start to we've obviously got this dark line that we put in with the cap at water and violet and we've got this sort of darker bit going up here so i want to bring this sepia in and start to add some of this shadow it's quite dark in that um that nose there it's also quite dark around this side of the nose so I'm just plotting back in some of these creases really really light pressure I'm using quite a sharp pencil at this stage and I'll keep turning it so that I can keep a nice sharp part of the pencil but let's start to bring in some of the the shadow here and it will it will actually transform this face as we start to bring these shadows in now so again i'm just using little circular motions bring that down here i don't need to worry about the moustache just yet we're going to blend this skin into the moustache i'm going to bring this color around these wrinkles we've got we've got these sort of quite heavy wrinkles but then there are also some much lighter wrinkles so I'm just going to plot those in as well with a much lighter much lighter line and I'm just taking a little bit off the edge of this eye I'm just going to switch. So we've got the, I've drawn the line in here for this crease with the sepia. And I am just going to go back to the warm grey four for a minute. Because as I've got the crease in now, what I want to do is I want to pull the pencil away from this line. And this is how I'm going to create this sort of dark, darker, um, deeper wrinkle that he's got here. So I'm pulling it away from this line out into the rest of the face. And that's, if you can see that already, that's already starting to shape this, shape this wrinkle. And then we've got the one that comes down here. And again, I'm gonna bring it out, bring this color out away from this wrinkle. It really is worthwhile doing this quite lightly because otherwise you'll just be left with really quite harsh lines. And we don't want that. I'm gonna come into this little bit with a little bit of the cap at Morton Violet because he's just got a bit more of a, a red little bit here. And this is more of the cap at Morton Violet as well. Take that up there. Bring 
these wrinkles here are just a little bit more red. So, really light pressure. And then again, I'm going to come back in with this grey, with this warm grey, warm grey four it is, and bring this, bring it around here and just feather it out. And again, when I get to this stage, I'm starting to bring the uh, the grey bit down. I'm starting to bring these lines down in the direction that the face is going in. I'll start to bring a little bit of this grey down here. And it's still quite sort of, you know, chunky at the minute. But as we start to refine this, this will start to look a little bit neater. I want to go back into this area with a little bit of the rose carmine because it's quite quite bright here even though it's got that grey tone to it it is quite bright so I'm going to go back over this grey I want to come in with this Venetian red as well and take a little bit of this Venetian red, a little bit around here. And bring this down over these creases, over this grey bit here in the direction that these creases and this cheeks going. And I think it is, I know it's taken a while, but I think it is worthwhile paying attention to his face because obviously of all the rest of the, you know, the bits of the portrait we're going to put on, people are going to look at his face. That's where the draw is going to be to his face. So if we can get something that makes his, you know, his wrinkles and his face look fairly realistic, I think it's going to add to the overall portrait. I'm coming with a bit of this Venetian red here on the, the edge here and down his nose. And then I'm back to this sepia 50% and right in this, sort of the side of this nose here, it's going to go really quite, really quite dark. And take a little bit of the brown ochre, ten percent again, and bring this cheek down. Just blending these colours, but in the direction of these wrinkles, in the direction of this cheek. Blend that together.
going to blend this little bit as well around here with this brown ochre. Ten percent, and just blend this. Blend the side of this face. Blend these wrinkles a little bit. And then what I'm also going to do is take the pink white again from the uh, luminance and blend some of the areas with the pink white. Just blend around these wrinkles. I'm going to come back with the the warm grey five and just darken down the side of this nose a little bit more, soften it down. And take this eye socket up into up towards the hat a little bit more. Just pull that up towards that hat. Just bring in a little bit of this warm grey around here as well. And at the same time, I'm going to go in with crimson from the Polychromos range. And I'm going to bring a bit of crimson into this, this area too. A touch of crimson around the side of this nose and take some of this crimson up into this hat. I'm just going to pull a tiny little bit of Caput Morton Violet off the corner of this. This wrinkle. And then just go along these wrinkles almost with little circular strokes to diffuse these wrinkles the wrinkles won't have they won't be sort of straight lines because of course they're they're sort of moving in and around the pores of the skin and the texture of the skin so they will have um, they'll they'll be going in different directions here and there so to use tiny little circular lines so little circular strokes all the way down the lines just so it helps create that, that texture a little bit. And I'm using the warm grey four 
and just drag this. this deep wrinkle on the back. Once I've put some of this uh, face into here, what I'm going to do is take the Payne's Grey and I want to bring some shadow down now under the hat and over the top of this face. So I'm going to bring this shadow down, take the Payne's Grey up into this hat. Bring this hat down a little bit on the front here as well. I want to use a bit of purple violet as well from the polychromos. I'm just going to go in with a bit of purple violet. Put a little bit of the purple under here into this Payne's Grey. I'm just coming in with a little bit of this beige red from the polychromos to just blend this skin together a little bit. Not pressing on hard, just using it to blend I'm going to use a warm grey one to just blend this a little bit on the edge I'm going to use the dark sepia and just bring the edge of this eye I'm going to take the uh, the slice tool, take the manual pen cutter. I'm going to start to just bring in a couple of extra little bits that are coming down. So almost like stray hairs coming down over the um, coming over Santa's face off his hat. I'm also going to just bring in a couple of little eyelashes on the front of, of his face there, which is actually going to make all the difference to this um, to this eye. The other thing I'm going to do is take a nice sharp dark sepia and bring a couple of eyelashes into that side of the, um, the eye as well. Okay, one final thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, uh, this is a light flesh 10% from the Karen Dash range. And I'm going to bring it down and over this cheek, just to lighten this cheek up a little bit. So I've just brought that, bring that down here. Just use it to soften out 
these wrinkles as well. So I'm just breaking up that line a little bit with the wrinkles. And just use it to gently soften these wrinkles. I just want to make them a little bit thinner so that they don't look quite so harsh. Take that around this nose as well. There's a couple of little bits there. Take it around the edge of this nose. Just using it to really gently sort of soften down the skin tone. So I'm not pressing on hard, just using it to brighten it a little bit and um, and soften it. Just going to put a tiny little bit of this crimson around the edge of this nose as well. So I think my face is pretty much there. I might go back and, you know, readjust it a little bit, particularly as I, I bring in the... Uh, the, the beard now um, but it's pretty much there but you know if you still feel you need to do a bit of work on yours then that's absolutely fine if you feel that yours might have been finished before me that's fine too so just keep working on it if you feel that you just need to work on yours we're just looking for a nice sort of soft blend with some quite bright colors really because obviously it is uh, quite a bright sort of pink face that he's got there Okay, so I think that's a good place to leave this tutorial for now. I'll be back in the next video. But until then, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.